everybody, it's Clormo and welcome to another tutorial for Logic Pro X. I'm going to be talking today about how to find or get very close to finding the key of a sample just using Logic Pro X and how you can also use that in conjunction with what I showed you before and compare and learn how to find a key and make sure that you have the right key for your sample. So as usual, if you haven't done so, make sure that you share this with other people, depending on where you're watching it, subscribe, like, follow, share it so I can reach others and help me spread the word on what I'm trying to do here, just trying to uh, uh, teach some of other people my knowledge in Logic Pro X and how to best use it. So I want to try to keep this as short as possible. So let's go to know your pro X. Um, first of all, my apologies, I'm going to try to crash through this because I think it's still gonna get the point across. So I have here a, a Apple loop that's called like that jazz piano bar 12. You can find it in your Apple loops library. If you don't find it, make sure that you download all the sound packages from all your pro X. But why am I starting with this? Because we have all the info we need, like I've shown before. And the, the important one is that I will have the key of that sample, which is, which is a major. And what I did was set my project around that and put the sample in there for the purposes of this uh, tutorial as well. It's going to be easier. And then I'll, I'll dial it back to if you don't know the key, right? So I have that there. I know it's an A major key and but let's assume that we don't know that. We just, I just put that there, right? That sample, you can do it at home and follow me. And let's say I don't know the, the, the key of that sample. So what can I do? This is an audio uh, track, right? So I can do an audio effects on it and put a plugin that will help me find or teach me how to find the key at least. And that guy is the, um, the tuner. So the tuner is going to be, I have it here in my recents, but when you go to uh, your plugins, you go to uh, metering, tuner, and there's the tuner. So what does the tuner do? The tuner, when you play now the sample, it's gonna show you here what notes are being played. And this is the reason why I chose this Apple loop, because it's a single instrument loop, and it's going to be easier for, for, for teaching this concept but it's still valid for samples that have other instruments because there's always a, a lead in the sample or I think that people typically choose a sample for a particular instrument melody of it and even if it has other instruments on it that one probably um, if it caught your attention it's because it's above all the other ones a little bit and logic and this plugging is gonna get it very close, you know, and, and, and use that. And I found that it gives a, a very good uh, results. And that's because I have uh, also used Key Finder and Serato DJ to have like three sources What I, I got a key. And let's just play this and see what the tuner tells us. See that it it's finding uh, the different keys, identify the sharps, and what do you do with this information? So what I like to do, it's uh, as they are playing. What I do is I bring up the notepad and I start uh, typing them here how they were being played from the tuner, and I have that there now. Yes, in this example, I know that I'm in the A major key. Just think that you don't know. And for just for the purposes of uh, making this faster too, I already have the A major scale notes in their order here. When you compare those, you see that, yeah, I have all those notes inside the A major scale, which just tells me, yeah, that's the right key and scale. And I can go ahead and build my own around it, my own sounds. But now let's go back. Let's say that we don't know, again, the major scale. We just went to the tuner and noted the keys or the notes 
We just wrote them down. What I what you can do, and again, you can go to Google and use any other source that you prefer, but the one that I like to use, it's this one here, basicmusictheory.com. And this is very good because it's gonna uh, help you also learn as you're doing this about a little bit about music theory. The assumption is that we don't know, right? So when you're in the, uh, in the home page, you have, when you scroll down a little bit, you have these charts. There's a lot of charts with different uh, key notations and all that. Let's just concentrate for now on you not knowing anything. And I'd say, okay, so the tuner was telling me that those notes were all majors and there were some sharps in there. So I'm gonna start with the major scale. What I suggest if you go to this page is to use the all scales on one page chart. Start with the major, scroll down a little bit, and here are all the major scales. And now what I can do, maybe I can print this, I can put it in Excel file, something like that, and uh, just compare what the notes that the tuner gave me against the different scales that I have in the chart, and then find the right scale and the right key and all that. You already found the key essentially because you have here A repeats and then uh, A, uh, it's kind of where the loop ends and then restarts at A. So kind of matches that, right? But then if you want to be even more certain, just compare this A major again, we compare the keys that are being played there and okay, we're close to that. Keep in mind though that there might be another scale that have, has those same notes, like for example, E major may have the same scales or the same notes being played on it. Now, this one has a D sharp, so you don't have a D sharp in your, in your music, so that discounts it. But when you use other samples with uh, more instruments on it, the accents and all that stuff might be in there and you will find that you may have two. But that's still not bad because you uh, boxed your problem to just two scales and you can pick one or the other and then your ear is gonna tell you which one really sounds best from the two. So that's still much better than, uh, you know, just trying to find it by ear completely without knowing any music theory. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to really do and practice to find the key and the, the scale of your samples. And, um, you know, that's, uh, in my opinion, pretty easy to do. And you're also going to learn some basic music theory by practicing this more and more. Now, last but not least, if I want to build around that, I just put a software instrument and now it's a software instrument, so I cannot use a tuner or anything like that. But if I want to play only in the A major keys, right, in that scale, what you can use here is go to MIDI effects and do the transposer, which I have shown you before, but just, this is just a recap and for the benefit of those that are watching me for the first time. So what this lets you do is just lock your root key to the correct one or the one that I found for the sample. So it's A and then the scale. If I leave chromatic, I will have all the notes. If I want to be um, perfect about it or if I just want to make sure that I don't commit many mistakes or because you don't know music theory or you don't know how to play the piano that well or any instrument, you can just say scale and make it major like it is here or make it something else. And now you have only those keys available to you. And for example, if I play E, just I'm gonna watch the LCD. I'm playing E. When I press F though, it sounds the same as E and that's because in this case, F is turned off. And that's gonna be true for all the other notes that are kind of adjacent to each other. And then uh, when I, you get comfortable with that, you can play with different scales and, you know, play stuff around and, you know, create your own um, melodies and chords around what you have. You can also bring up the piano roll 
and then uh, use this feature to scale quantize what you play. You can play off uh, of a, a node that's not supposed to be, and it's gonna quantize it to the one that matches the key and scale that you have found for your sample. So that's all I had for this video. I hope that you find this useful and that you practice it and keep building those beats, you know, a little bit, a level, a little bit above of other people. If you just go sample based without putting any other MIDI or other instrument on top of it, then you probably won't need this as much, but I suggest that you still practice it. So next week i'll probably take a, a little break because of the thanksgiving holiday and have family here so it's probably going to be a little bit tougher for me to put anything together but i'll be coming back the week after that and you'll see what i bring up to the table when we get to that point okay so thank you as usual peace out people